Well, I was born in 1921, December the 7th. <laughs> Coming up. That's right. And you were just telling me that your aunt delivered you. That's true, Aunt Hetty Jones. I was due. My mother was in labor. Daddy went to Fuquay to fetch the doctor. And he had not returned in time. So I never wanted to be late <laughs> for anything. So I came early. They had it delivered me. Mm. What was it like in this area when you were growing up? It was all farmland. We all had cows, hogs, a mule or a horse or two mules, chickens, eggs, firewood to make a fire in the stove to cook on mm -hmm. and to put in the fireplace in the winter time to keep warm by. There were very few houses. Mm -hmm. Back then we didn't buy loaf bread. You baked it yourself? Well, we had cornbread and biscuits. I grew up on cornbread and biscuits. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I ever learned how to cook was cornbread. Really? I think my mother said, so I couldn't do much damage with them. <laughs> I got that way of turning that dough around so it would be crumbly. And the baby chickens just love that. <laughs> they ran wild. <laughs> How many chickens did you have? Growing up, we had, oh, probably 75. Wow. Roosters that crowed every morning at daylight. <laughs> and we usually had two pigs mm -hmm. that we raised two great big hogs to kill for meat all winter. Two pigs were gracious plenty to keep us going all year. Mm -hmm. We had ham most any time or shoulder. Or we cooked with a lot of pork. Mm -hmm. A lot of pork. And you had cows as well. Oh yes, and I learned how to milk by the time I was five years old. Wow. And I, then a few years later, I wished I'd never had. <laughs> because I had to do it all the time. <laughs> you had very little way of getting around back then. And I can remember when gasoline was 25 cents a gallon. Wow. It was cheap. And we've always had a car. Even my brother says, Mama always hit every rock in the road, <laughs> so he'd have to fix a flat tire. <laughs> she probably had to teach herself, didn't she? Pretty much so, because Daddy died nine years after they were married. Mm. She did a great job. I think she did. Running the farm, teaching school, and raising three kids. My grandmother came to one of us and looked after me while she was teaching school. Mm. And she called me her pet bird. And one day she was putting some clothes in the soak for my mother out in the wash house and I had a cat. Well I didn't know it was time for the cat to have her kittens. But anyway, there was a window 
octane broken out. The hen flew through that window and laid some eggs. And it came time for her to set on those eggs. And this was all in a wooden box. Well, the cat decided to have her babies <laughs> in the same wooden box <laughs> with the hen and the eggs. Well, I wanted to be with my mother cat. So I crawled over it in the box too. <laughs> My grandmother turned around and said, Catherine, if you don't get out of that box right now, I'm going to spank you. Hmm. I says, and if you do, God will puncture you. <laughs> but I got out of the box. <laughs> she had to turn to keep from laughing. <laughs> I bet she did. So when did you build the house that you're in now? We moved in this house in 1959, mm -hmm. February the 5th. And my daddy's youngest brother did most of the building, he and his two-man crew. Wow. The uh, brickwork was let out, the electric work was let out, and the plumbing. But Uncle Harry and his folks did all the rest. And people come in and say, how do you keep it so straight? I tell them, because Uncle Harry told me it better never do any other way. If it was, he was going to come back and haunt me. <laughs> I've had several people say, how did you think of everything? way back then. I said, well, I looked at a lot of pictures and I saw a lot of houses. I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And with four girls, I knew that we needed at least four bedrooms. And I wanted it all on one floor. And Uncle Harry said he wanted to know how close to the ground did I want it? I told him just as close as he could get. The back door steps because I wanted to be able to come up them when I got to be old. Mm -hmm. And when he put those door steps in out of the carport, he says, now, if that's not low enough, he said, I'll come back and kick you up. That's Uncle Harry. <laughs> well, he asked me one day when I came down to the house for a little visit, what kind of top I wanted on the china cabinet and the book cabinet. I says, well, Uncle Harry, I was thinking about wood. He says, okay. And that was all that was said. A few days later, he says, brought you your Christmas present. I said, you did? He said, yep. See this board? He says, I've had it in my barn for several years now. I was going to build an outhouse for your Aunt Rennie. He says, well, she's holding out for a bathroom in the house. <laughs> so I have promised her when I finish this house, I will build her a bathroom. So I won't need the board anymore. And the reason it's so wide is because when I made a hole for her fanny, I didn't want it to be pinched. <laughs> And that board is 17 inches wide, solid pine. Nice looking men, I would say they were in the 40s, to ring my doorbell. And I'll try to keep that screen door hooked. 
So I said, may I help you? They said, well, uh, are you affiliated with any church? I said, yes, I am. Well, we have some literature here that we'd like to give you. I said, thank you, but I'd get all the literature I want from my church. Well, do you believe the end of time is coming anytime soon? I said, no. I said, do you? Yes, the signs all around. I says, you know, I says, I'm 95. And I've heard that all my life, and it hadn't happened yet. I says, you need to read on a little bit further. And it says, you know not the hour, the day or the time. And they turned and said, have a nice day. <laughs> Get on, grandmother, get on. <laughs> mm. So, I t told Glenn that. He says, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talking about the end of time. And I said, they also say, be ye ever ready. He says, you're right. The best thing we can do is to be ready to go whenever the call comes.